Welcome back to Junior ECTV. I'm your host, Rhiannon Trail, and tonight I want to welcome Dr. Graham Opward, uh, Professor Emeritus at York University and co-author of the research paper, The Numeracy Gap. Uh, Graham, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. And so I've read the paper, of course, and we did host you at the Economic Club this week. We had a fabulous discussion, so I thought, what better opportunity than to speak to our young people and to have this conversation here. So I want to ask you first, Graham, if you could explain to us what you mean when you say the numeracy gap. As you said at the top of the show, uh, Rihanna, the, the uh, requirements for people to be numerate, to be able to know math, and more importantly, to use math in ways like we have to these days, are growing all the time in mm -hmm. our technological society. Unfortunately, in Ontario, we've got evidence that while the, the need for math and numeracy is increasing, our abilities at doing it, both students and adults, are getting less. So what we're seeing is a gap opening up mm -hmm. between what's required and what we've got. Okay, so what's required, what we need for our technological society, and where our actual levels are. So that space in between. So I want to open this question up to you guys first. There's this perception or this idea that, you know, you just some people are just not good at math. So, you know, I know that I believed that I was one of those people growing up that, you know, I just wasn't good at math, I was good at English, and that was my forte, so focus your efforts there. So do you believe that, you know, some people are just inherently not very good at math and that's that's the truth? Well, I personally believe that I'm not very good at math. Um, I think it's like with many things in life, like some people are better at different subjects. Okay. So I feel like, yeah, some people might not be as good at math than others. Okay. I just wanted to clarify something with you. So when you say math, do you mean, you know, general arithmetic, you know, like checking your change at the cash register? Or are we talking calculus here? Like, Well, numeracy is different than math skill. Maybe That's you can explain right. that. That's right. Yeah. I think that we're making a distinction here between numeracy, which is the use of mathematical concepts in everyday life. Mm. Now, the everyday life of an engineer might be the everyday, different from the everyday life of somebody else. And so it varies a lot as to what sort of life you're, you're le leading. But nonetheless, we're talking about the use of what you know rather than just how much you know. Mm -hmm. And certainly, something like calculus and the more advanced math that you're getting in grade 11 and 12 is of use to certain people who are going mm -hmm. on into certain fields. Mm -hmm. But there is a certain level of math that every citizen should have. Mm -hmm. Like when you read in the paper about the percentage of something of some group who, um, let's say, are in favor of some political candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't even have a concept of percentages, you don't make sense of that, do you? Mm -hmm. So we, you, we, we'd probably agree that everybody needs to know what a percentage means. Mm -hmm. Or even when we're talking about basic financial literacy, so how would you be able to be a financially literate citizen if you don't understand interest rates or you know percentages or whatever else? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of what we're talking about. Getting back to it, do we believe that some people just aren't good at math? Is that a real I, thing? I believe what it is is it's just right now, we saw it over here. The moment you say, are you good at math, everyone instantly thinks of, okay, now there's linear algebra and calculus and all of this. People refuse to see that, no, there is a certain base that really anyone can do. One big example is, whenever I go out to eat and we calculate tip, people pull out their calculators. That makes no sense, because mm -hmm. it's going to either be like about 15%. All you have to do is take your number, move the decimal place, have it, add it to that initial number, and done. You have 15%. Finished. But people s tend to think like, oh, no, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. And you get intimidated. Exactly. And mm -hmm. people, another thing is the, the sense that with math, you have to get the number perfect. You go to a store, you see an apple for, let's say, a pound, four ninety nine, and the bananas, four ninety nine, And you think, oh, I can never add those, because look at all those nines. Instead of just thinking, let me add them together and think, that's about $10. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Add your 13% tax, bing, bang, boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. See, but I'm one of those people that, like, I'm not the greatest at math, and I have no problem, like, saying that. But I believe that when you're young, you have to be taught math in an approachable way. Um, when I was in grade two, my teacher went the whole year without teaching our entire grade two class any math skills. So my entire school career, I've been trying to catch up and do that. And, and that the only reason this, this teacher got caught was because the substitute teacher said, you go, you, like, why aren't we doing any math? Like, where's your math book? And one of my classmates pulled out their math book and 
nothing, completely blank in May. Wow. So this teacher got fired, of course, because we have no math skills. So I've been spending my whole public school career trying to catch well, up on the skills. That's a critical time, grade two, absolutely. So Graham, tell us, is this true? Are some people just not good at math, or what is it? Well, I think it's very interesting. Um, in Canada and in most Western countries, there is a sort of implicit belief that some people can do math and some people can't. And it's almost like there's a math gene which you've got to have. And then if you've got it, you're OK. And if you haven't got it, well, it's tough. Nobody says that about reading. Nobody says, uh, uh, well, some people can read, but other people, I'm sorry, you're just not going to be able to read. I mean, we don't believe that, do we? We don't accept that. And no. in Asia, it's really interesting. There's a s quite significant difference. Asian countries are the same over math as they are over reading. Mm -hmm. They expect that at a very basic level, every child should be able to do math. So is it a cultural problem? So I think we've got a cultural problem because when I've asked you the same question in Europe, other European countries, everybody's like in Canada saying, oh well, see, it's, it's like people believe that some people can do it and some mm -hmm. people can't. I think it goes back to what you were saying, Amanda, it's the way you were taught, mm -hmm. or in your case, unfortunately, not taught in, in grade two. I think if we're taught in creative ways, in ways that you s make you see the point of what you're learning, mm -hmm. then it, you, you grab it. Mm -hmm. I mean, your example was, was mm -hmm. um, for using change and calculating tips and things like that. These are practical things that ordinary people do all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody who's buying groceries want to find out whether this package is better value than that package. Mm -hmm. They've got to have some sort of math concepts to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's the using of it in practical ways that we really mean by numeracy. So how effective do you feel your, your math classes have been in, in school here in Ontario? Do you feel as though you're getting a really good solid grasp of, to use in everyday scenarios? Um, I w personally, no. I wasn't taught how to do long division until the sixth oh grade. God. Same. So I, like Amanda, like I had some teachers who just didn't teach math, which is again like why I say I'm not very good at math because I am missing those basic fundamentals. Okay. So I think, like, yeah, there are some issues with the teaching, and that is mm -hmm. one of the main problems. I think, I think one of the issues is that it adds on where, again, we're thinking long division stuff. I, myself, I really didn't grasp long division until I was in, like, maybe the 11th grade even, just because I didn't need it. But I still consider myself numerate, or whatever you call it, because the fundamental thing is we need to look at everything like the basics. When we look at reading, we see you identify letters, you group them to words, you sound them out, and you go. When it comes to numbers, a kid, we see them trying to do addition with their fingers and we slap them and say, what, what are you doing? You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. We don't have the same intimacy with the yeah. growth of numbers, with the growth of all this. People see it as two plus two is four. They don't actually try to understand and grasp the you basic like building blocks that are over yeah. there. I'd be, I'd be very curious uh, to see the impact of technology on our numeracy abilities, uh, you know, in, in, your, in your time, so to speak, say before the calculator, maybe before a lot of yeah. the internet. Yes. Before uh, the advocates. We, we, were, we were counting on our fingers. Yes. So did you, did you find that uh, people's overall numer numeracy was better? Was better? That's a good question. Uh, that is a very good question. I can't honestly say. I think there was still the belief that some people can and some people can't. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the calculators I mean, there are a lot of kids, if you ask them what's six times five, is they'd reach for a calculator. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because in our day, um, memorizing times tables was something that everybody had to do. In my case, I was a bit slow on it. <laughs> and my mother, when we were on our, our holidays, said that each day I had to learn one times table before I was allowed to go to the beach. And, you know, it was, there was a real incentive to, to learn yeah, it. And, but the point is, ever since that, holiday when I was about seven years old, I, I've known it. I've never thought about it again. I've just known it. Mm -hmm. Well, I Whereas don't think you can just say that. What is six times five? <laughs> 30? <laughs> By golly, he's got it. But, <laughs> but what happens when your parents aren't great at math either? Like, yeah. I know my dad put a lot of pressure on me to be good at math because he's He's stronger in math. Okay. But with my mom, when I asked her for math homework, it would always be like, oh, that was that was too long ago for me to like accurately help you. I'll get your brother. And then my brother would be like, you know, I'm not really great at this either, so you're kind of stuck. 
sorry and he'd walk away. Okay. So what happens when you don't have family members that can help yes. you with well, that and you're stuck with the teacher he, that sucks? Well, and, and that's the problem. I think we've got to eliminate teachers that suck, to mm -hmm. use your terms. I, a whole other show. I think, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, 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 yeah. I was talking to a... Um, uh, uh, somebody who does math for primary and elementary school teachers um, at one of the faculties of education at our, sh our meeting on Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. She said that routinely she's got student teachers in tears as they contemplate the fact that they've got to teach math. So this, in, the, in, uh, in Ontario, we will more or less take anybody who wants to become an elementary school teacher as long as they've got the grades and degree and so on. Um, in England, right now, you've got to do a, a, a numeracy test and a literacy test before they're even allowing you into teacher's college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's something that they don't want to do here, but I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. It's a great idea. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're bringing up right now the teacher's union probably wouldn't be too happy well, about right. that. That's right, and that's mm -hmm. that's one of the problems, but maybe we've got to say, look, it's what students needs that are, should come first. Yeah. But now let's, let's look at the positive. I just want to bring up the positive side of teachers, because I'd say, for example, I didn't consider myself strong in math until about the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. when I got a teacher that completely changed everything. Yes. And now I feel blessed really to have the teachers teacher. I have right now. Yeah. Yes. But I think the fundamental thing is the way they do it is they say it's really almost effortless. It's just if you, one big issue is the curriculum lock. When you're in the third grade, when you're in the sixth grade, when you're in the ninth grade, you have to waste a month of your year focusing on this EQAO, mm -hmm. which measures numeracy skills, quotation marks. Mm -hmm. yeah. In reality, what it is is, Okay, now we have to make sure kids know how to solve this exact problem. So let's show them how to plug it into that little computing method in their mind instead of thinking, you know what, it makes a lot of sense, this probability. If I have three socks and one's red, the odds are one over three. Instead of just thinking, there are three, there's one, one over three, blah, 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 and I'm finished. Mm -hmm. If we could have, again, bring back the intimacy in the sense, if you could have teachers that are more able to mm -hmm. branch off. But furthermore, again, it's also streaming, I guess. I, I'm strongly against the way streaming has been done right now to the point where... What do you mean by making people choose whether they're going to be in advanced or in exactly. general Exactly. In the ninth grade, you have... My sister's one of these people. In the ninth grade, she took an applied math course. Now she wants to get back on track. She's in the tenth grade. She has to take a ninth grade univer uh, ninth grade whatever course academic. again. Yeah. Academic to get back on track. It, it almost makes no sense how they say, okay, in summer school you can take this bridging program. No, it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. You go to this summer school, you bring back your blah, 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 you do a couple tests, you get, you pass the exam and you're done. That, that isn't building a relationship of growth. That's why people have trouble with calculus because same you mess up one part in the beginning and you won't mm. be able to continue. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with every other thing. With the if you don't know how to add in the beginning, you're going to be wasting all this time throughout your entire so math it, career. It seems like the three of you have basically said that a lot of this problem is coming from a poor foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that if we, if we understood the theory better and the concepts behind basic math, you know, a lot of the pieces would, would really come together. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like it needs I agree to be taught yeah. in a way I that like, right. it's relatable. Like, as soon as you told me, I'm going to lose money if I go to this bank with this entrance rate, I was like, okay, I understand that. I then need to know to that. Know. Yeah. But if you're telling me that like X, Y equals Z, then I'm not going to, like, well, it doesn't make sense. Well, I think that you have to understand why you're, you're learning these skills and yeah. how they apply. And I think we do a really poor job of doing that in many subjects in school. We don't make it relevant to students. One of the things that I remember finding so eye-opening was all the doors I was closing by dropping math. So I only took math up until when I, when I had to, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize all of the careers and all of the things that required math that I would have never thought of. I never thought if I was interested in fashion I would need to know math, but you need to know math. You need to be your numerate in order to do your to measurements, in order design to and design so. patterns and all of that. Like, people don't talk about those things you know to young Let's people. get back on the math hate train. I just realized another thing I absolutely <laughs> hate about the fact that if you cannot read and you're in the 11th grade, they're not going to make you read James Joyce Ulysses or something like that, right. okay? They're going to say, okay, we need intensive learning. They have literacy programs for ESL kids for this, for that, and everything. In math, if you have trouble with multiplication and you're in the 11th grade, they're still going to make you factor. Yeah. And that makes no sense. So let me ask you a question. You know, in the grade t in grade 10, you took the numeracy test. Uh, sorry, the literacy test. Yeah. Yep. We proposed that there should be a, lit a numeracy test along with a literacy test that every student ah, has to pass. I don't know. The, Would that make a difference? The literacy test is terrible. I remember what I did to my literacy test when I finished with it. Uh, some things I won't repeat on television and such, but no, it is absolutely <laughs> same to same. Ask any English teacher about the literacy test, and they'll give you an answer after so the 10 seconds they spend groaning. 
Yeah. Do you, so do so you don't the find these way? tests effective? I, no. I don't think a numeracy test, I think a numeracy test should be on a teacher, like before they start teaching kids at these so young ages. Like they should be able to teach a kid math in a way that they will understand. One of the things that I found really frustrating throughout my school years was that because I was bad at math, the teacher that, this was especially in my middle school, the teacher that taught math to the rest of the class, the people that sucked at math got sent to a different classroom with a teacher that could spend more time with you because you needed more help. And it just made you feel so helpless and so like targeted. Like it, would always, it was already in your mind yeah. you were good, so then you were kind of And then all your friends math. knew that you were bad at math and mm -hmm. you were getting special treatment for being bad at math. And it just didn't make you feel good. But then again, it's the lazy. When I used to teach swimming, one of the worst things I would happen is if a kid got past in the earlier levels and they couldn't swim, it, it sort of snowballed to the point where you could get them to near the end of the YMCA swimming program and they'd have trouble treading water. It's yeah. the same thing with math. All you need is one teacher to be a little bit lazier, let this slide or that slide, or just maybe not have the resources to recognize mm -hmm. that kid is suffering. Mm -hmm. You send them forward and that, what's that teacher gonna do? Mm -hmm. Are they gonna fail them in the fifth grade? No, it's gonna continue and continue and continue until the point where people just decide, hey, you know what, I don't wanna take math anymore. That's the real yeah. problem with math, you know? Because if you miss that one piece in grade three or grade six or whatever, y you're in trouble for the rest of your, your mm -hmm. educational career mm -hmm. because yeah. math really is a, is a is a building subject. We, we noticed that, that uh, we did a lot of research in, in first year college and in all the 24 colleges around Ontario they are finding the same problems with math um, in their incoming students and these are problems which have nothing to do with the grade 12 curriculum or the grade 11 curriculum or anything in secondary school mm -hmm. they're going back to those it's concepts which they would missed as you yeah, said absolutely. early on grade 3, grade 4, grade 5 and which they somehow managed to get through all the math courses in secondary, but never really understood. Then when they hit college, the college faculty say, look, you just can't become a nurse or you're an accountant or a, what a, even no. a fashion designer right. unless you've got these basic concepts straight. So we're going to have to remediate, not the grade 11 and 12, but remediate the grade 3, 4, 5 stuff that, mm -hmm. that you didn't know. Yeah, the basic fundamentals, which is really, it's a really sad place, and it's a sad place for an economy uh, like Ontario's that's a knowledge-based economy now that is relying so heavily on people being able to do the science, technology, math, um, and yet we're not able to sort of meet those particular standards. We're having a real sort of gap now. It's called an essential skills gap, essentially, is the way that we talk about it, where there's these essential skills that fuel our economy that we our own citizens can't do. Um, so what do we do then? We're having to bring in talent from elsewhere around the world for these jobs. It's a really big problem going forward. So it's kind of scary stuff, isn't it? It's not all bad news. Uh, the Minister of Education has, and I don't ad agree with the Ministry most of the time, but <laughs> the Minister of Education has recognized the problem. They've done something and the, very and good, they've, yes. they've said that in future every elementary school are going to have three lead math teachers good. there to make sure that there's good quality math through the elementary school. Mm -hmm. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah, what does what what in the future mean? Five years, 20 years? No, I think they're talking about next September. I think they're talking about oh, next okay. September. Well, so this uh, handles... the quest, that begs the question about uh, whether there are enough elementary math teachers of caliber of, t to do it. But they are planning that straight out as to September. I that's think it's the goal. A, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Sure. All of you have examples of having a teacher that maybe wasn't comfortable themselves, and then how that perpetuates mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. So having this is yeah. definitely a great step by the province and in the right teacher, direction. that teacher, yeah, that teacher who was yeah. not doing the job yeah. properly, probably okay. didn't have anybody I'm gonna in the school. I'm going to cut off right there because we're going to be right back. Oh, <laughs> we'll be yeah. right back with more on the numeracy gap right after this short break.